Want to know how to paint furniture without sanding? In this step-by-step -step tutorial, we're going to upcycle this old dresser. And at the end of the video, I will share a featured blooper. Hi, my name is Kim with Kimagine DIY, where I hope to help you imagine the possibilities with DIYs and crafts. If that sounds like fun, consider subscribing. Now let's just jump into the materials that we will need for this project. When you're painting a dresser without sanding, you definitely want to make sure you wipe it all down. But a key ingredient is also the primer. Not just because of the major color difference I'm doing with this dresser, but primer actually helps adhesion between your paint and the actual dresser unit. So to prep the area, you definitely want to make sure you have some drop cloths all around. You can paint it on the floor. It's just a lot easier when it's raised up, uh, like I have here on a couple of workhorses. I also used a foam brush to do all the moldings and any hard to reach corners. But you can use a regular brush for this too. Sometimes in my paintings, I found it easier to use the foam than the regular paint brush. You also want to remove all the hardware before painting and remove the drawers to make it easier. Another awesome tip for painting wood furniture, especially with such a smooth surface, is to use a sponge foam roller. This roller is only about an inch thick and it's awesome at getting a very smooth finish. After your first coat of primer, you're gonna see that it is blotchy. So I waited one hour like the can said and painted a second coat. Now that it's fully primed, I waited 24 hours before putting the next coat on. So here I'm putting our main color down using the same brushes and tools as I used for the primer. Question of the day. What do you have in your house right now that you would love to repaint and upcycle? Let me know in the comments below. Now that the main color has been applied, two coats and it is completely dry, I'm adding a Java glaze to it to add some texture. We're only putting it on the drawer fronts. When you're working with a glaze, I am using a regular paintbrush because I want those lines in the paint. This paint's actually normally used to age or give that age look and you rub it on with a cloth. But here, I'm using it to add almost like a wood grain texture to these draw fronts. You only use a little bit of glaze at a time because you wanna make sure you can spread it out evenly. And there's a lot of play with it, meaning that's why I keep going back and forth with the paintbrush until I'm happy with the color consistency and with the, the texture of it and how straight my lines are. It takes a little practice with the Java Glaze to get a hang of it. Even whenever I paint with it, I'm a little nervous at first, but you'll get a feel for how much time you have to play with the color as you're using it. With this glaze, you also wanna make sure you do any lines, for example, for this dresser, any of the vertical lines first, and then make sure you go over the horizontal lines if it gets onto the other surface. So after waiting an hour for the dry time, I am putting a second coat. Here's just an up close look at the Java's second coat so you can see how much you have to play with it to get it to where you like. Once everything is dry, then you can just screw in all your hardware. I'm so happy at how it turned out. It completely transformed from something that was very Tuscan to now more contemporary, almost tropical vibe to it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Don't forget to watch the blooper at the end and I will see you guys next week.
Hi, my name is Kim with Kimagine DIY. Why? 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 Why?